So today I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about Easter. Wow, imagine that. Um, but before we talk about that, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the world in general. And in this age of social media, as I'm sure you all do, I read a lot of stuff on the internet. Um, and of course the internet is a great place to go and to learn things. It's also a cesspool in some ways. <laughs> so you gotta remember where you are on the internet when you're looking at it. But I have found someone that I really enjoy reading um, his posts, his blog posts, and his name is John Pavlovitz. And John is a writer and a minister and an activist. And he's from Wake Forest, North Carolina. And he posts um, on his own personal blog and is pretty well known, apparently. I didn't know who he was, but now I do. Um, but I do find his writings really insightful and really inspiring in a lot of ways. So I wanted to share something with you that he posted um, at the end of March, um, so not too long ago. Um, and I think it still applies to us today um, in the general energy of the world that we're in right now. And he writes, you should be a little weary right now. If you are, be grateful. That is a good thing. That weariness is confirmation that your heart is working properly. It is your humanity responding to so much inhumanity around you. It's evidence of your goodness still fighting to feel useful. Your heavy fatigue is the internal alarm of an empathy that will not allow you to proceed unaffected while so many grieve here, while war rages half a world away, while the planet burns, while there is so much brokenness in the place you call home. To not feel any of that would be a red flag. To not be brought to tears now and again would be a far more worrisome condition. To not occasionally be leveled by the sheer volume of the burdens in your orbit would be a symptom of a far greater sickness within you. It would mean that like far too many people around you, someone else's pain is no longer a consequence to you. It would mean that you'd learned how to anesthetize yourself from the suffering in your path, that you no longer felt emotionally tethered to other human beings. You being perfectly fine would be a dire diagnosis. And that would be a far greater tragedy than all of the sources of your sadness, because it would mean that these days have claimed yet another compassionate human being and allowed apathy to supplant the space where empathy should reside. It would be proof of one more person joining the ranks of the willfully oblivious. Listen, friends, I know that giving a damn is more perilous which is why so many refuse to take that path anymore. It is a treacherous journey that will keep you up at night. It will furrow your brow and bring you to tears and frequently break your heart. But there is no other worthwhile way to live. You are better because of the weariness, more human as a result of your soul's fatigue. The challenge is not to be so completely overtaken by it that you lose the ability to care, that you finally reach the threshold of what you can safely bear, that you fall and you cannot get to your feet again to enter the fray. You expiring early is not the object here. Becoming a martyr of your own heart is not the goal. You being here a long time and caring a great deal is. So I want you to take care of yourself. Withdraw into the places of stillness and silence that give you rest. Nurture your mind and your body with good things, with music and art and food that give you joy. Shield yourself with prayer or meditation or exercise. Surround yourself with people who too care deeply 
so that you're reminded that you are not alone. Hydrate and sleep and be selfish about maintaining something of a balance between the burdens of the world and your ability to carry them. But don't expect you will still be tired much of the time, that your heart rate won't sometimes rise so loud that you hear it in your head, that you'll not temporarily be brought to tears and to your knees. You may be tempted to envy those who don't seem to care because of how easy it seems for them, but resist that. In days like these, when so much are in such pain and when so many people have chosen not to be changed by that fact, your heaviness is understandable and actually quite beautiful. You should be weary right now. I'm glad that you still are. And now here we are on Easter morning. And in spite of the weariness that I felt that John so eloquently wrote about in that piece, I feel hopeful because Easter always brings to me a sense of hope. And I think it brings a sense of hope to many because we're celebrating the day that the ascended master, Jesus the Christ, rose from the dead. And on that day, he proved to all of us that life continues on and that death itself is just one more doorway that we walk through on our ongoing spiritual journey. And can you imagine how distraught his disciples must have been after Jesus was arrested, after he was tried, after he was convicted, and after he was sentenced to death in a really, really awful, ugly way. Can you imagine how terrified they must have been and how weary that sadness and that fear must have made them? It can't have been that much different from the way many of us have felt while living in our recent world. But then as Luke says in his gospel in chapter 24, verse 36, while they stood talking about all of this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. In that moment, after all of that, Jesus showed the disciples and he showed us all what is possible. He showed us that we can all achieve this triumph of triumph over the death of the physical body and the continuance of our soul as an energy. And in showing us this, improving this to everyone, he continued teaching as he always had. He showed us that anything is possible, even those things that seem completely unattainable. And that's why Easter is a time of hope. Emily Dickinson, the poet writes, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Our souls know the truth. Our souls know that we continue on as impossible as that may seem. And our souls know that if resurrection is possible after death, then anything is within the realm of possibility. And we know that this is what spirit is because it is what Jesus promised us when he spoke in the gospel of John, verse four, I'm sorry, John 14, verses 16 through 17. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. We know this presence. 
we know this presence as the Holy Spirit, the voice of truth that our souls speak to us. It's the source of our hopefulness, and it reminds us now that Easter is a time of renewal and a time of infinite possibilities. It's the Holy Spirit that calls us to rejoice in what we know, to celebrate the immeasurable power that our love and our faith can calibrate in this world. We look at our symbols of Easter. We look at eggs, which celebrate or represent new life. We see bunnies that represent fertility and prosperity and growth. We look at lilies that represent rebirth. What is it in our individual lives that's new? What needs nurturing like a spring flower so it can blossom? Where do we need to grow? What do we want to do in our lives? And how can we cultivate our dreams to become realities? These are questions that we can meditate upon at Easter time. And as we do that, we can be sure that the Holy Spirit will bring us insights and guidance so that we can understand our best way forward. And so that we can go that way in joy. So let us be grateful today for our elder brother, the master Jesus, who demonstrated for us the miracle of life after life and for giving us the Holy Spirit who continues to work with us to create this beautiful, loving world where we all can thrive. May your Easter be blessed and bright. We are going to have a few moments of meditation now. We're going to do a little guided <laughs> meditation so if you want to get comfortable in your chair, <coughs> it's always good to have your feet on the floor when you're meditating because it grounds you and Mother Earth keeps you tethered to this sacred space. As we go within into the space and the energy that is there. And so I would invite you to gently close your eyes and to just allow yourself to move into your breath. Just notice your body and how it is breathing breathing in and breathing out without you even having to do anything at all. Breath in and breath out. This miracle of a body that we have. And send a little gratitude to your body, to your lungs as they fill and as they release air back out into the world. Send some love and some gratitude to your brain, the part of your body that controls things that keeps the day moving along, that keeps you moving along. And send some love and gratitude to your heart, to your heart that 
beats and pumps the blood that moves throughout your body, but also send some love and gratitude to your spirit heart, your energetic heart, the part of you that focuses on love, on receiving love, and on giving love, just as you breathe in and receive air and breathe out and let go of air. You can breathe in love energy and breathe out love energy. And just allow yourself to breathe just for a moment. Being here in this place, in this time, and if other thoughts come into your mind, other worries or things that you haven't done, just let them go. Watch them float away like petals on a breeze on a spring day. And just imagine now being somewhere in nature, somewhere that you love to be perhaps a real place that exists, or perhaps just a place in your own mind, but somewhere where there's nature all around you, woods, beach, mountains, whatever it is, Imagine yourself in that place right now. And allow the beauty, and the energy of that natural place to envelop you and to relax you and to bring you even more peace. And just take a moment to notice where you are. And to notice all of the little things that you might not notice every time you visit. Notice what time of day it is. Notice how warm or cool it is. Notice any subtle textures pressures on your body in different spots where a leaf might brush against you or where the earth might be beneath your feet. And as you stand in this beautiful natural place, let yourself reach into your pocket And in your pocket, you find a seed. And pull that seed out of your pocket and hold it in the palm of your hand. And look at this beautiful, tiny little seed that has so much life and so much potential within it. And the seed is inviting you to tell it what energy you would like it to hold. 
energy that you want to create in your life. Quality, a situation, an event, something that you're dreaming of that you want to see come to fruition. And as you hold this seed in your hand, whisper that intention to it in your mind. Put your heart energy behind that intention and infuse it into that seed and let that seed carry the energy of your intention. And now take that seed and kneel down on the ground perhaps in the dirt or the sand or the clay, wherever it is that you are, knowing that this ground is the perfect condition for this seed to be planted. And dig yourself a little hole in the ground easily with your fingers. And drop that seed into the hole. Cover it back up. Knowing that as you plant this seed in this spot, in this perfect place and in this perfect time, it will grow. And you can return to this spot anytime you wish to see its progress or to water it or to send it more heart energy. But know that it will continue to work its magic underneath the earth as seeds do in the spring as they begin to unfurl, and to finally come into the light. So say thank you to your little seed that carries your intention. And just sit back on the ground enjoy for a moment more this beautiful natural place. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And now allow yourself to begin to come back into your physical body in this physical place. In this time in this energy here in the physical world. Feel your body once again in the chair. Wiggle your fingers and your toes as you come fully back into your physical self. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes, wide awake and at peace. <laughs>